about music you see, so stick with me and be all that you can be and join me on a journey through music theory. Hi, I'm Mr. B, and today we're going to learn about brass instruments. So brass instruments are a family of instruments, and you can find them in the orchestra. Brass instruments usually look brassy, although mine is blue colored, but most brass instruments have a nice golden color to them or a silver color to them, kind of like the valves on the top of mine. So brass instruments usually have these things called valves, okay? But not all brass instruments do. For example, the trombone does not have a valves. It has a slide, so that's the exception. But most brass instruments have valves. Now what happens with the valves is when you buzz and you blow your breath into the trumpet or the tuba or what am I forgetting? the French horn, it your air travels through all of these tubes and goes through twists and turns and everything like that. When you press down a valve, you can't see it from the outside, but it actually opens and closes some of the tubing, which makes the pattern of air longer or shorter, okay? So when you press down a valve, some holes open up or close inside the instrument, which gives it a longer path of air or a shorter path of air. And that's what helps to regulate the sounds that you hear. Also, all brass instruments have a mouthpiece. This is a mouthpiece. And you don't blow into the mouthpiece like you would a woodwind instrument. You have to buzz your lips, okay? So if I blew into it, you don't get much of a sound. But if you buzz your lips like this, then you get a sound, right? And I know that's a silly sounding sound because it's just with the mouthpiece. But if I attach the mouthpiece to my trumpet, and I'm gonna buzz my lips into the trumpet, and this is what it sounds like. Okay. So you have to buzz your lips. If I don't buzz my lips, this is what it sounds like. Did you hear any notes? You didn't hear any notes. You just heard, heard the breath, heard my wind coming out of my mouth. But I'll buzz one more time. So I'm buzzing my lips like this. And I know that's a silly sound, but that's what you have to do to get a sound out of a brass instrument. So let's learn more about brass instruments. Hi again, I'm Mr. B, and today we're learning about brass instruments. So as you can see from this picture here, this is a more proper color of the brass instruments. I know my trumpet is blue, but usually they're usually this golden brassy kind of a color, okay? And a brass section in an orchestra is usually towards the back because they're very loud. So if a brass section was put in the front of an orchestra, you wouldn't be able to hear the violins very well. So usually a brass section is towards the back with the percussion section in an orchestra. The first and most common um, brass instrument we're going to hear today is the trumpet. And you've already seen me play a trumpet today, but let's have someone else who knows how to play a lot better than me. Here is a jazz improvisation on a trumpet. So you'll remember that I pointed out the valves. There's three valves on a trumpet, and the mouthpiece is right here. And I didn't talk about this yet, but this is called the bell of a brass instrument, and that's where the sound comes out. Let's do this one. Let's listen to this one.
So as you can see, the trumpet can play a lot of different styles, classical, jazz, and blues, as well as some others. So this is the trumpet. And there are smaller trumpets, like the piccolo trumpet, is what you see here. You'll notice this piccolo trumpet has four valves. That's probably because it's so small and there's not a lot of tubing. So it needs a little help from the valves. And the piccolo trumpet is actually higher sounding than the usual trumpet. So the trumpets are usually the higher sounding brass instruments. A cornet is also another instrument that's similar to a trumpet. You'll notice it's a little bigger and it's got more mellow of a sound, but it still has three valves and a mouthpiece and a bell. A flugelhorn is also very similar to a bugle, I'm sorry, to a cornet. So there are many variations on the trumpet. Now the next instrument is called a French horn. I know this says horn in F, but it's usually known as a French horn. Now the French horn is very unique in its shape. You'll notice that the shape of a French horn is very circular and it's the only brass instrument that people have to put their hand into the bell. And when they put their hand into the bell, it helps to raise a pitch if they need to do that or they can get a different sound when they put their hand in there. So here is a video of someone playing the French horn. You'll notice it has a mellower sound. And you'll also notice that the valves on a French horn are a different shape than the valves on a trumpet. Let me see if I can show that to you here. Yeah, here we go. So the valves are flat like this. They're flat pieces instead of like the trumpet has the circular pieces on the top. So that was the French horn. Let's go to a trombone. Now a trombone is very unique because it's the brass instrument that doesn't have any valves on it. So in order to play a note on the trombone, you have to use this slide. And you'll see players putting the slide further away from them to make a pitch lower or bringing it to them to make a pitch higher. So let's listen to the trombone. So it has lots of different variations in order to get all the different notes and you slide them together. Now a slide in music is called a glissando. Do you see this word here? It's called a glissando, which means a slide in music. You can also do a glissando on a piano by putting your hands on the keys and just taking your hand and rubbing it across all of the keys going up or down. And that's called a glissando. Now there are some larger brass instruments as well. The most famous one is the tuba. This is a very large instrument. You need lots of air and you need, and it has a bigger mouthpiece. So the mouthpiece shape is also important. And a tuba sounds like this. <laughs> So a tuba is usually the lowest sounding instrument, and you'll notice on the tuba it does have valves like a trumpet. 
and it like this is the bigger mouthpiece that I mentioned. Now, two variations on a on a tuba. One is called the euphonium. It's slightly um, smaller than a tuba, so it's gonna it's gonna play a little bit higher. Here's a euphonium. So you notice that's a little smaller than a tuba. It plays higher notes, and there's still three valves. And the last brass instrument we'll talk about today is called a sousaphone. Now this is similar to a tuba, but it's shaped very differently. You'll see that it has this circular shape, and that's so that it can be used in marching bands. So when it's a circular shape, you can actually put it over your head and hang it on your shoulder, and that's what helps support the instrument while you walk and play with it. Okay, so that was the sousaphone. You'll see a lot of military bands using it as well. Hey, what do you call a brass instrument that likes to save its money? A frugal horn. <laughs> Get it? Frugal horn? <laughs> Fa oh, there we go. Thanks for watching my video on the brass family. Bye. I'm Mr. B. If you like what you see, please subscribe to me.